Good morning, beautiful people. It's Thursday, November 10th. I'm Taylor Rockwell, and you are listening to The Goal Mouth, a podcast collaboration between Dirty Tackle, Howler Magazine, and The Total Soccer Show. On yesterday's program, you heard the deafening silence of existential panic, but not today. No, today we are back to the business of soccer. So no more talk of the current position of the United States and its unknown future, at least until the final whistle goes in the USA-Mexico game on Friday. On a more serious note, I wanted to say that I know some people are connecting politics with this game, and I've seen a few folks tweet that they are U.S. men's national team fans who will be rooting for Mexico in this game. If that's what you want to do, then of course that's your prerogative, but I'd encourage Goldmouth listeners to see this game as what it is, an important historical rivalry with World Cup ramifications. Is it going to be a heated atmosphere? Yes, it always is. Is it going to be hostile? Probably, because it frequently is. But at the end of the day, what the match really is, is an opportunity to relax to the greatest extent possible. It is a World Cup qualifier. Watch some soccer. And if you're a fan of the U.S. national team, continue to actively root against Rafa Marquez whenever he's on screen. Because, I mean, you know, some things are sacred. Until then, on today's delicious menu of bite-sized soccer news... Qatar would really like people to stay sober at the 2022 World Cup, and they're not being particularly non-threatening about delivering that message. Cristiano Ronaldo shouldn't try to copy the swimming habits of Scrooge McDuck. Wayne Rooney turned down money for a seat on the bench. Doctors could soon control instant replay. And Antoine Griezmann hearts Paul Pogba. Up first, when England inevitably gets prematurely eliminated from the 2022 World Cup, fans of the Three Lions might have some difficulty drowning their sorrows. According to Time Magazine, Qatari officials have officially banned the consumption of alcohol in streets and public places during the 2022 World Cup. Leaders in the Gulf state are also seeking to ban alcohol inside the individual World Cup stadiums. As gently clarified by Hassan Al-Tawadi, the Secretary General of Qatar's Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy, quote, there will be no alcohol consumption on the streets, squares, and public spaces, and that is final, end quote. When asked if Budweiser and Miller products would still be allowed, he added, I mean, of course, people have to stay hydrated somehow, don't they? In other news, Cristiano Ronaldo has had a decent week. As Daryl told you in Monday's Goalmouth, the 2016 Euro champion signed a deal with Real Madrid that will keep him at the club until 2021. The new salary attached to that contract seemed slightly excessive until Wednesday's news that the forward had also signed a lifetime endorsement deal with Nike. Ronaldo becomes only the third athlete, Michael Jordan and LeBron James being the other two, to ink such a deal with the retail giant. The agreement will reportedly earn him a staggering 24 million euros per year, though I'm pretty certain that inflation means that at some point that will be the 2016 equivalent of only like 10 bucks a year. So, you know, there's that. Just what he will do with that money remains unclear, though Peter Griffin has shown us all that having a Scrooge McDuck-esque vault of gold coins doesn't work out too well. Remember, they aren't liquid, they're a great many pieces of metal that form a hard, floor-like surface. Dive into them at your own peril. The Telegraph reported that Wayne Rooney was the subject of a £300,000 a week offer from China Super Club Beijing Guan in the summer. The deal was ultimately rejected, but a move could be back on in January if the England captain remains on the fringes of his Manchester United team. When reached for comment, Rooney, I'm assuming, indicated that he couldn't reduce himself to being a merchandising avenue for an uncompetitive team with whom he has zero chemistry, and therefore maybe Manchester United isn't for him anymore. Okay, I know that that joke was a bit of a layup, but I've got to vent my Man United frustration somehow, so there it is. On the news that will make Jose Mourinho angry front, Doctors could soon be allowed to stop matches if they think a player has suffered a concussion. If the International Football Association board chooses to move ahead with the plan, as soon as next season, doctors could be seated on the sidelines of matches. The plan would allow for those doctors to monitor replays of collisions and stop gameplay if there is a risk of a concussion. If implemented, the new rule would obviously represent a positive approach in the movement to combat post-concussion problems. In addition, the ensuing stoppage of play would require broadcasters to up their vamping abilities since they would likely have to fill time while treatment was being handled, and I personally can't wait to hear Ray Hudson scream hyperbolic phrases about subject matter that once used to be the exclusive domain of John Madden. If you don't know what I'm talking about, find the clip of him diagramming the marital status of buckets. You will not be disappointed. And finally, it's the international break, which for some reason means it's time to crank open the transfer rumor machine. Sergio Aguero has scuppered links with Real Madrid, stating that he's happy at City and that Pep Guardiola has always given him good advice. Antoine Griezmann, meanwhile, also put an end to reports linking him with a move away from Atletico Madrid before sort of immediately started them back up. Said the Frenchman, quote, You hear a lot of speculation about Manchester United and PSG, but right now I don't see me moving to a new club. But it would be awesome to play alongside Paul one day, end quote. The Paul in question there obviously referring to Paul Pogba. With the money that I've already mentioned in the previous stories, it remains to be seen where Paul and Antoine might one day unite. 
It could be Manchester, it could be Madrid, it could be China, it could be Phil Knight's backyard. You never know for certain. That's it for today's Goal Mouth. You can explore all these stories in more depth by subscribing to our newsletter. The link is in the show notes. I've been Taylor Rockwell. Ryan Bailey will be with you tomorrow. But until then, I'll leave you with today's Goal Mouth top tip. Gold coins aren't a liquid. You heard it here second.